on set, as soon as the lights come up, the first song she sings is that Jamie has left her. Um, and the first song he sings is Shiksa Goddess, because he's this Jewish boy that's just fallen in love with this, you know, non-Jewish girl, and, uh, and he's really cool about that. He thinks that's awesome. Um, apparently his experience has been um, in his own ethnicity and he's breaking out or he at least feels he is. So um, while ethnicity is not a huge part of the show, it does define who he is. Um, and so anyway, he's very excited about their first uh, date. And she, of course, is devastated because he's just left her. So then we go backward in time with her and she ends the play kissing him goodnight on that very first date. So there's a lot of, I guess to say flashback would be stretching the truth because you don't experience it for the other character until they get there. So there's foreshadowing happening at the same time as flashback. So you see things resonate for him that you're vaguely aware of you saw with her earlier and vice versa. I think the fascinating thing about the concept is that this is a play about two people who are very intimate and go through some very intimate things. But it's really a one-person show. It's a one-man show for him and it's a one-woman show for her. And at one point, remarkably, they share a duet and the electricity is palpable at that moment because you've seen them on stage but never making eye contact never speaking to each other never singing with each other until the moment when he looks in her eyes and they do their wedding vows and they're singing this gorgeous duet so it's the concept is really really awesome and that's what really drew me to the play when I first saw it about 10 years ago now in Kalamazoo and uh, uh, it's a tour de force for the two performers because they never stop singing. It's been described as a song set more than a musical because there is no dialogue. It's one song right after another. And there's no intermission break. You're supposed to run it straight through. Um, and it's about an hour, 20 minutes or so of um, sort of voyeuristic uh, looking into the lives and the souls of these two people. So. Who are the two stars? Two actors are Laura Ann Johnson, who plays Kathy, and she was last seen on our stage in Fiddler on the Roof. She played uh, Hoddle, the second daughter, and has that lovely song, Far From the Home I Love. So if people saw that, they will remember her beautiful voice. And she, yeah, great, great voice. Uh, so Laura Ann is playing Kathy, and uh, Joe Schaup is playing uh, Jamie the author. He writes books and is hugely successful and she tries to break into show business and is not as successful and that's one of the stresses on their relationship. Um, but Jason Robin, Robert Brown, the, um, the composer of the piece, uh, had just gone through kind of a nasty divorce when the idea was germinating in his head about this and um, in the introductory uh, remarks that the, that the playwright always does at the beginning of the script, he does talk about how he came upon the idea and how it's really largely autobiographical. Um, and I understand there was some legal maneuverings uh, after the first version of the show came out because his ex-wife felt it was a little too close to home and there were some things that had to be changed and all of that. Um, so if you're interested in, you know, sort of an author's backstory, there is a little bit of that, ooh, you know, what is real and what is fiction. Um, but anybody that's ever been in a relationship is going to be able to identify with these two people. It's some pretty amazing writing. I mean, the music in this is complex um, and that's putting it mildly. I mean change in time to signature every other measure and um, you know 27 sharps and flats and, and it's just it's chunky and complex and it feels that way so when you listen to it it's not poppy or or you know the da -da 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 musical theater kind of it's it's really soulful and and evocative and it's it makes me cry and it makes me laugh and and um, there are some numbers that are sort of that sort of rock out and then there are some numbers that are uh, reminiscent of classical chamber music and it, it's really hard to describe. It's austere and I think in community theater oftentimes we try so hard 
to give the audiences a substantive production, a substantive experience that we overproduce and we put so much stuff there up there on the stage and we give our actors so much business and sometimes that really defeats the message of the piece and really all we are is storytellers right so if we can tell the story in its simplest form and really drive it home I think that's when we do our best theater and this production is austere because of the set it's very um, it, it, it's not a realistic set there are images like two rings one inside the other that sort of represent wedding rings and the circular nature of, of relationships and life in general um, and there's a bit of scenery here and a bit of scenery there and just suggestions of things there's a beautiful grand piano on stage and that's it that's that's our orchestra pit is a pianist who plays the heck out of that grand piano um, and everything that's on the stage absolutely has to be there there's a stack of books because he's an author and he does book signings and 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 there's a dock because she appears on a dock in Ohio when she's doing summer stock theater the clothing they wear the the properties that they use everything is only there because it absolutely has to be there and the story just comes out of all of that and you're not confused by a lot of fussiness you know and that's what I love about it. It's just the music and the story and the way these two actors just tear into it is pretty remarkable. Have I mentioned today how lucky I am to be in love with you?